Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. 2 Samuel chapter 15. This is going to be an encouragement to read the book of 1 and 2 Samuel specifically. It was one book originally in the Hebrew. And an encouragement to read the Bible as a whole because the stories here are so good. I'm going to start at verse 1 and I'm going to kind of skip around. That way you all will hear the story directly and you'll have some idea of what's going on, not just from me saying, okay, here's what it's about. You'll actually hear some of the book itself. <clears throat> so starting at verse 1. After this it happened that Absalom provided himself with chariots and horses and fifty men to run before him. Now Absalom would rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. So it was whenever anyone who had a lawsuit came to the king for a decision that Absalom would call to him and say, what city are you from? And he would say, your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, Look, your case is good and right, but there is no deputy of the king to hear you. Moreover, Absalom would say, Oh, that I were made judge in the land, and everyone who has any suit or cause would come to me. Then I would give him justice. And so it was, whenever anyone came near to bow down to him, that he would put out his hand and take him and kiss him. In this manner, Absalom acted toward all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Now it came to pass after 40 years, um, the word really should be four in the footnotes according to the Septuagint manuscripts, the Syriac and Josephus, the word there is four, and David's reign was only 40 years, so very likely it's four. It could not have been 40. Sorry, a little note there. That Absalom said to the king, please let me go to Hebron and pay the vow which I made to the Lord. Then, skip down to verse 10. Then Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigns in Hebron. Skip down to verse 13. Now a messenger came to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. So David said to all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, or we shall not escape from Absalom. Make haste to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring disaster upon us, and strike the city with the edge of the sword. Skip over to verse 19. Then the king said to Etai the Gittite, Why are you also going with us? Return and remain with the king, for you are a foreigner and also an exile from your own place. In fact, you came only yesterday. Should I make you wander up and down with us today, since I go I know not where? Return and take your brethren back. Mercy and truth be with you. But Etai answered the king and said, As the Lord lives and as my lord the king lives, surely in whatever place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also your servant will be. And then skip down to verse 27. The king also said to Zadok the priest, Are you not a seer? Return to the city in peace, and your two sons with you, Ahimaaz your son, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. See, I will wait in the plains of the wilderness until word comes from you to inform me. Therefore Zadok and Abiathar carried the ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they remained there. And then skip down to verse 32. Now it happened when David had come to the top of the mountain where he worshipped God, there was Hushai the archite coming to meet him with his robe torn and dust on his head. David said to him, If you go on with me, then you will become a burden to me. But if you return to the city and say to Absalom, I will be your servant, O king. As I was your father's servant previously, so I will now also be your servant. Then you may defeat the counsel of Ahithophel for me. And do you not have Zedek and Abiathar the priests with you there? Therefore it will be that whatever you hear from the king's house, you shall tell to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Indeed, they have there with them their two sons, Ahimaaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them you shall send me everything you hear. So Hushai, David's friend, went to the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. My heart honestly... I'm, I'm kind of grieved and a bit depressed as I read this because David went through such a hard time. He showed mercy to Absalom only to have Absalom actually steal the kingdom from him for a short time. His very son, who he forgave of some atrocious things, as he himself had been forgiven for some atrocious things, came in and betrayed him and tried to take the kingdom from him. And again, he succeeded for a short time. So David's leaving after this giant conspiracy was hatched against him. Apparently, a guy called Ahithophel, who had been David's counselor, according to a previous verse in this chapter, sided with Absalom and turned against David to Absalom. David left priests in the city as spies. He left one of his advisors in the um, 
palace. He sent him back as a spy. You've got all this intrigue, all this drama, all of this um, conspiracy, all in this book. Again, this book is ex as much as it's like the story pulls me in and it draws me in. I just feel for David, and that's what a good story does, makes you feel for the character. So this is a huge encouragement. Read the Bible. Read the book of First and Second Samuel. They're so chock full of goodness, drama, suspense, intrigue, and unfortunately, adultery, rape, and murder. Well, like from a story standpoint, it, it's so bad because it's historically true. So I'm kind of like, I hate the fact that it happened. But from a story standpoint, oh my gosh, it's so full of all that juicy goodness that just it's a juicy story that makes you feel for the characters, and it's a great story. So while part of me is like, man, this sucks for them, part of me is like, man, this is a great story. So read the Bible, and get you know, it, check out the book of First and Second Samuel, or I'm or yeah, First and Second Samuel. Blah, I was about to say First and Second Kings. Those are good too. Check out the stories of First and Second Samuel where you read the story of Saul and then David, um, the most famed king of Israel. It is good stuff. You won't regret it. It is magnificent, even though it's written in a bit of an old tongue. You can, you, I think you can manage to. Oh, leap over the hurdle of, a, of an older language and the kind of the way it's worded to just get a great juicy story. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.